What is connecting rod? A connecting rod is the part of a piston engine that connects the piston to the crankshaft. Together with the crank, the connecting rod converts the reciprocating motion of the piston into the rotation of the crankshaft. The connecting rod is required to transmit the compressive and tensile forces from the piston. In its most common form, in an internal combustion engine, it allows pivoting on the piston end and rotation on the shaft end. Parts of connecting rod Following are the parts of connecting rod. Small end, big end, bushing, bearing inserts, bolt and nut, shank, wrist pin, piston, bearing cap, small end. The end at which the connecting rod is attached to the face of the piston pin is known as the small end of the connecting rod. Big end. The end at which the connecting rod is attached to the side of the crank pin is known as big end of the connecting rod. Bush bearing. Both ends of the connecting rod are fixed with a bush bearing. A phosphor bronze bush is fitted with the solid eye is attached to the small end of the connecting rod. The big end is attached to the crank pin. The end is divided into two parts and is supported over the crank bearing shell. Bearing insert. In the big end of the connecting rod, there is a bearing insert that is connected to the bearing cap. It is known as a bearing insert. These are made in two parts that fit together on the crankshaft. This is the position where the connecting rod travels along the reverse direction. Bolt and nut. After the connecting rod is fitted with the crank at the bottom, both sides of the big ends are fastened by some bolts and nuts. Thus, by combining these all components, the connecting rod is ready to use. Shank. Furthermore, each of the bolt and nuts are employed to connect both the connecting rod and bearing cap. And a section beam is applied, it is known as shank. The section of the rod may be rectangular, tubular, and a circular section. The connecting rod length lies on the ratio of I divide by R, where I is equal to the length of the shank or beam, and R is equal to the radius of the shank. Wrist pin. The engine piston is connected to the connecting rod with the help of a hollow hardened steel tube called wrist pin. It is also known as gudgeon pin. Wrist pin goes through the short end of the connecting rod and pivots on the engaged piston. Piston. The piston is connected to the crankshaft with the help of a connecting rod, which is usually shortened to the rod or con rod. The purpose of the piston is to work as a movable plug in the cylinder, which forms the bottom of the combustion chamber. Bearing cap. Shell bearings have an adjustment for wear, but it controls the running and the side clearance allows the bearing cap to be tightened correctly. Now let's discuss about the material used in connecting rod, their differences and which one is the right choice. Generally there are a few materials that are commonly used in the creation of connection rods. Steel alloy, aluminum and titanium are mostly used. Let's start with good old common steel. Steel is a great material. It's strong and it's plentiful and has been the material of choice for connecting rods for many decades. Steel rods can be cast, forged, or billet. Cast ones are okay for stock engine, but are usually a bad idea if you're interested in significantly increasing the power and torque output of your engine. The estimated production cost of these connecting rod is quite less but on the same time it cannot be used in high horsepower applications ranging from 450 to 6000 rpm. A cast connecting rods is found containing a noticeable seam down in the middle which is used for differentiating it from the other forge type. Billet steel rods start out by having their rough shape cut out from a plate of forged steel and then finish machined on a CNC machine. It is comparatively lighter, stronger, and durable as compared to other kinds of con rods. These connecting rods are commonly used for high-end running vehicles wherein the product is designed in order to reduce the stress risers and to ease it into the natural grain of billet material. Billet rods don't have the surface degradation that occurs during forging, which means a fully machined billet rod has the same kind of material with the same carbon content and quality both in its core and on its surface, 
making billet rods bad at resisting the formation of cracks. When it comes to aftermarket forged connecting rods, forged rods are referred to as those connecting rods which are made of forging or by forcing grain of selected material into the shape of the rod. You will typically see the 4,340 alloy which in addition to having a high carbon content also has other elements nickel and molybdenum which make it a superior connecting rod material. Steel has a tensile strength of approximately 200.000 psi and excellent fatigue life. The material doesn't get tired unless you push it to its yielding point. Now let's take a detailed look at aluminum connecting rods. The tensile strength of steel is approximately 200,000 psi, while the tensile strength of aluminum is about 95,000 psi. So why would you put something that's twice as weak inside engine and expose it to all the extreme loads of engine operation? Because aluminum rods are generally 25% lighter than steel rods. And for this reason, they are very popular with racers looking to shed mass from the reciprocating assembly when it comes to performance engines. Light is right. The lighter the rotating assembly of your engine, the better it is. Aluminum rods also have the ability to act as shock absorbers. Because they sort of give in a bit to the peak loads present in an engine, they help absorb these loads and transfer less of the stress onto your bearings and crankshaft. But there's a price to be paid for all the benefits. Aluminum has a much shorter fatigue life compared to steel, and engines with aluminum rods must be warmed slowly and fully before you can beat on them. And once you beat on them, you have to let them cool off a bit. Something else you need to consider when installing aluminum rods into your engine is clearance. Sometimes they don't clear stuff in your crankcase, like girdles or the bases of the cylinders and you need to adapt these to suit the rods, and now for exotic guy in the bunch, titanium. Many describe titanium as an incredibly strong material, often stating that it is stronger than steel. This is a bit misleading. The reality is that titanium is impressively strong compared to its density. Titanium is significantly less dense than steel while maintaining comparable strength, which means it's lighter than steel but with pretty similar strength. This is why titanium rods don't need to be thick like aluminum rods. In fact, titanium rods will usually look similar to steel rods. Aluminum rods are typically machined out from billets of high-quality aluminum alloys and are rarely forged. When it comes to titanium, the opposite is true because the forging process greatly benefits titanium and helps increase its strength. Titanium is less dense and it also has smaller grains compared to steel, so the forging process does a lot to help improve the grain flow and increase the strength of titanium. Titanium is also very susceptible to galling, or friction welding, but the galling issue has been largely solved with coatings such as chromium nitride or titanium nitride, which is why you can find titanium rods in mass production vehicles like the Honda Acura NSX or the Corvette Z06 with the LS7 engine. By the way, the first ever application of titanium rods in a production vehicle was Honda's amazing RC30 motorcycle. Titanium is also very notch sensitive, so you have to be careful not to scratch titanium rods when handling them. Comparison between the physical properties of steel, titanium, and aluminum. Have a look on the, the chart. Thanks for watching the video. For more, subscribe to my channel.